All right, we're back in business. Welcome back to The Hard West. Uh, this is episode or scenario number four, where we are um, accompanying Cassandra on her way to raise $25,000 <clears> and buy her way out of um, a very, very peculiar situation. She's being hunted and in order to flee, she's done everything so far to escape. Well. Funnily enough, we're looking at 15,000 and uh, she has now overheard in the gambling town that one of the moldy shipwrecks down here might contain a treasure. So let's run through them. Moldy shipwreck on the sharp rocks of the bay, said the decomposing wreck of a caravel. Almost entirely disintegrated, they could barely make out the name on the ship. Louis uh, the 137th. Cassandra doubted it would yield much. She, she decided to search the wreck anyway. Um, as they descended <coughs> into the wreck. Oh shit, Andrew Harden has now a numb black. <laughs> oh gosh. He's taking wounds after wounds after wounds. As they descended into the wreck, uh, Harden stepped onto a sea urchin and had to be helped out, limping onto the shore. This sort of closer inspection, the wreckage yielded an uh, ivory comb and some golden teeth worth a hundred pesos or so. Harden suggested that there might be more values on the bottom of the bay, but uh, obtaining them would mean uh, contending with more dangerous sea fauna. Um, well, Peiko needs to dry, uh, uh, needs to go for more treasure. Peiko is also affected by an arm black. Cassandra's companions disappeared beneath the sparkling water. After a number of attempts, the swimmer finally gave up. The sea urchins had been numerous, and they were badly stung. Okay, that's fine. Now, here's the deal. Uh, Andrew has more wounds. Um, than anyone else I've ever seen. He has a shredded hand, a gushing wound, a numb leg, and is poisoned. So he's really, really fucked up. But still he's holding him tight. And if we play our cards right with him, all of these after the next scenario should turn out to be um, actual uh, benefits. Um, we also have a numb black on Paco, uh, Paco, but we all already knew that he was not the fastest. That's fine. Let's keep going. The next shipwreck. The ancient wreck of a Spanish galoon sat, <coughs> sat in the small co uh, cove and uh, looked harmless enough. The name on the bow read Amaya Calvo. The air smelled of dried seaweed and mold. As we were going inside, descending into the cargo hold, the team found crates filled with valuable and expensive materials. Much of the treasure has decayed over time, however, a good portion of the silver and gold objects could be salvaged with a significant amount of work. Cassandra decided they needed the money. As the salvation continued, Harden became very. He told Cassandra that the longer they stayed here, the better the chances someone would arrive, perhaps to lay uh, to lay and wait uh, in attack once they come and retrieve all of the um, the treasure. Um, well, we're continuing. Andrew is now uh, also affected by a gunshot wound. The attack came at dawn, Cassandra and her companions fought valiantly, but the bandits still managed to endure some of the party members. Andrew Harden was hit in the arm, the wound bled uh, prodigiously, worse still, the shots could be heard for miles. Cassandra cursed the thought that the authorities might become alarmed despite injury, however, the team recovered all of the loot in the shi uh, ship. Uh, they totaled uh, several thousand pesos at last. Now that and Cassandra by the way, had the necessary 25,000 pesos, she was ready to conquer La Fortuna's grand tournament. That's interesting. We really have a lot of money now. And by the way, he's down to three hit points. He has a gunshot wound, a numb black, a gushing wound, and a shredded hand. Boy, oh boy. We got ourselves plus 10 luck. Your shots don't replenish en enemies' luck, and enemies nearby lose all of the luck during the time. Plus, we have a couple of um, other cards. 
for instance, uh, plus two de uh, um, defense, and we can kill people not protected by sunlight. That's interesting. I think we should give her the card because it's the first ability that she could use. Um, having a pair of aces is 20 extra luck. So this here could be a full house. Uh, without the aces, we're looking at only 30 luck. With the, full uh, with the aces, we're looking at 4 movement and 30 maximum luck. That's not bad. I was hoping we get something for his tremendously low HP because he has so many wounds. Um, but I guess it's fine. I mean, we just need to keep him in the back. I suppose. I mean... Yeah, but it's gonna be a hard choice. We could get a Royal Flush and that theoretically... Um, Theoretically, that could uh, give us plus three aim. Let's think that through for a second. You know, let's redo the cards real quick. I think the Royal Flush gives us plus um, plus three hit points, if I'm not mistaken. So, if we were to take the sniper shot and the extra hit point joker and all of this here, we would be looking at, yeah, the Royal Flush with three maximum hit points, which um, makes it way, way better uh, in terms of uh, having enough hit points. In all fairness, um, he would have less aim, because the, clearly uh, some of the aim is missing. Uh, it is what it is, though. <clears throat> Let's think about what else we can do. I mean, we could go for a straight. Straight isn't bad either. Like, this here could be a straight. She would get a regeneration of one hit point per turn. Sends all of the enemies. And actually would be a pretty good character. She's up 27 defense, which means she can, she can hardly be, um, be damaged or killed. Well, and we got this demonic strength here. I guess the only issue here is uh, that Andrew has all of the uh, luck based skills like he's using all of the active skills we do have king of spades which is basically face off uh, and, and shooting all of the enemies uh, we have chain kill which is a wonderful additional option it's it's good for the sniper i'm not saying it's bad it's just a uh, sniper um yeah the sniper um needs his luck to focus on one of the things Huh. Not hundred percent convinced yet. Like if we would do it differently and if we were to give Andrew extra hit points. Extra aim, oh, that's fine. Uh, 
Um, you don't want to give him these cards. Another hit point. Uh, another aim. By the way, why is this bonus not stacking? Like this here? Yeah, this guy has a bonus of one hit point. And Ten luck and two defense. Not seeing that he gets any of the bonus. Hmm. Four of a kind for a massive aim bonus. That's an option I was hoping for a full house instead. So let's assume we, we leave the sniper as such. I'm just thinking out loud because having so less hit points, I don't want to heal him because I, I'm greedy and I want all of the benefits afterwards. Um, Peiko here gets the king of spades and we'll give him extra movement. Plus he has a face off ability. That's fine. That's good. And with king of diamonds, uh, he even has additional luck. That's even better. to give him at least three hit points so looking at the rest like the remaining cards I like the idea of chain kill which we should definitely give to her 75 luck is good for the chain kill That's a pair, and we're looking at two pairs together, uh, together with the Joker. So that's not bad. We do have a lot of luck um, because this here is two pairs, and this here is three of a kind. Two pairs. No, it's uh, also three of a kind. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So that would be three aces. Yeah, I think that's the uh, that's the best setup that we could get. Having 180 luck is awesome, and with her having the chain kill ability, him having face off, and basically him having the ability to uh, to ricochet and stay out of sight, that's not bad. Okay, good enough. Let's look at the last one. On its side in the shallows, the shipwreck looked like uh, a beached whale. When Cassandra's team had it inside, they found it filled with the uh, dead bodies of a crude passenger. The air was heavy and the stench uh, of the stench of the dead. Cassandra knew the dangers of decomposing uh, that decomposing body um, presented. The cargoes were filled with dark, scintillating rocks. Felicia became um, Agitated, uh, said it was uh, pitch blend, the nausea inducing, vitality draining, and natives called them curse rocks. She ran out, shouting for others to do the same. Um, we're leaving the ship. We don't need a nausea on top of all of the things that we have.
Good. So we are ready to go to the reception hall to play a, in a poker game. Which... Could possibly, uh, couldn't possibly go wrong. Cassandra and her companions arrived at the building where the poker serie was held. Uh, the imposing building was made entirely out of cast iron and glass, a feat of unparalleled in Mexico. They had some time to kill before the game started. Cassandra wandered the floor and sized up um, the other players while she was waiting for the tournament to begin. The room was filled with players from all corners of the land, tense with anticipation uh, of the conflict to come. Finally, the cashier uh, booth opened and players began to fork over the cash necessary to re register. There was still time for Cassandra to mingle with the guests. Let's see what the guests have to say. The soiree was first and foremost a social uh, pageant where the rich and the famous could show off uh, their opulence and their peers to rub their success on the faces of their competitors. Though everyone appeared friendly on the surface, the competition tensions in the halls uh, was palpable. Cassandra eavesdropped on an argument between one of the contestants and the lady. The corporal and sweaty man in a tall uh, head was arguing with his wife. She said he would lose again uh, their fortune, all the while he assured that he had been working on his gambling skills. This seemed to enrage her further and she launched into a tally of his uh, various tells while he denied all. Cassandra returned to enjoy the evening, taking note of everything uh, she saw. One of Cassandra's competitors left his drink unattended while he showed off his new pocket watch. Cassandra thought back to the bottle of uh, laxatives she has obtained earlier. While crude and unfair, it was most certainly eliminate a player from the game. Cassandra swiftly poured uh, it into the drink. The gentleman returned to his drink, drowning a single swallow. His smile lasted a while, but ultimately faded in a terrified grimace. He excused himself and rushed away in a sprint. Cassandra returned to enjoy the evening. Cassandra caught a glimpse on a middle-aged gentleman gazing at her with a cryptic smile. She returned the man's gaze and smiled back. A few minutes later, the man approached her, presenting himself as Jim Vaughn. He commented herself on, uh, on her competitive attitude, alluring to her underhanded activities in the reception room. Um, seeing her frown, he laughed and assured he would not expose her. He said Cassandra reminded him of his younger self. He was looking forward to testing his skills against hers in the upcoming game. Cassandra returned to enjoy the evening. All right, let's wait. We just paid 25,000 pesos. Um, she treated uh, Cassandra um, guessed this must be Ricardo La, Furn, uh, La Fortuna. As if reading her mind, he bowed and placed a gallant kiss on her hand. La Fortuna presented himself and asked for Cassandra's name. La Fortuna uh, uh, bowed lower still and wishes Lydia good luck in the upcoming game. The first round of the game had 20 contestants divided among four tables. Among them was Jim Roth. Cassandra realized her table had only four players. One has, must have been missing. She also noted that she'd, uh, pl uh, she'd been placed with the corpulent man whom had, she has been seeing to argue with his wife earlier. She was seated uh, and the uh, rules were explained. The two winners from each table would meet on the second round which would determine the grand champion on the gala and the owner of the rare piece of jewelry being uh, staked by Mr. Larfotina himself. The chips were distribu distributed and the cards were dealt as the game started. Initially, the game was casual and easy. Cassandra singled out two candidates for elimination and deftly defeated them using her accurate gambling skills. Only one man was left at her side and she knew his tells having overheard his argument with his wife. She read him like an open uh, book. Sh soon he dispatched as she was he was dispatched as well. The croupier congratulated uh, Cassandra, telling her he'd transfer her chips to the main table for the final round. There was an hour break between round one and two. 
The tournament was still in full swing. The losing tears were dried by cheerful senoritas and gallons of alcohol, whilst the winner gloached, praised and luxuriated in the lobby. Cassandra looked around, sizing up her competition. Um, one of the finalists discreetly uh, retreated to his room, intrigued Cassandra, followed him. As they left the party, the atmosphere of the crowd and the gambler accelerated their place, crossing uh, the steel and glass corridors of the place with unusual haste. Then, when he entered the hotel wing, he disappeared. Cassandra looked helplessly around to the halls of the hotel. There were two, row uh, two identical rows, one, uh, one of each uh, wall of the hall. One she noticed had uh, light sifting from underneath it. As she approached it, she saw that it has been slightly ajar. She peered through the opening and to her surprise saw the man injecting himself with something from a syringe. Morphine. The gambler lay on the bed. Obviously, uh, every, uh, everything around him, he was in full rapture of the morphine shot. Um, Cassandra slipped inside and gave him another injection of an even stronger dose. Uh, Cassandra hesitated, wondered if the lack of experience ex at mixing drugs uh, might spell the man's demise. Um, I've come uh, this far, she thought, emptying the syringe. He certainly didn't protest. Rather, he closed his eyes and fell asleep with a blissful smile on his lips. Cassandra left a gently kiss on his sweaty forehead and left the room. Cassandra returned to enjoy the evening while looking around. Once the break was over, Cassandra proceeded to the table. The players sat down at the final round of La Fortuna's poker tournament. Along with Cassandra, three other men were uh, still in the competition. One defaulted when he failed to arrive at the des uh, designated hour. Cassandra recognized Jim Vaughn from his uh, previous conversation. The last remaining man was a mystery. Names were exchanged, cards were dealt, the game began. The stakes in the final game were much higher, and so it was uh, so was the skill of the participants. But as the game progresses, uh, progressed, Cassandra's chip supply diminished until she was on the brink of bankrupt uh, bankruptcy. She needed a decisive move to improve her situation. Uh, she could target Dr. Farby and Faye, who. Uh, whose uh, stash was the smallest, or Jim Vault, who has been doing extremely well thus far. At this point, his skills seemed unmatched. We're going for Dr. Fay. Dr. Fabian Fay never fully held his cards. He lifted them slightly off the table, um, peeked at them even so the, um, he would pick his fine uh, mustache, but Cassandra quickly determined this was not a tell. Uh, she kept his, her composure admirably throughout the evening. It was clear this was not his first game. Um, uh, we are using our psychic abilities. Before the doctor had no more chips on the table, uh, he stood up, bowed complimentary to each of the players and thanked them for the worthy entertainment. He uh, strode off to the lobby to relax. To win the tournament, Cassandra still had one more opponent to defeat. She decided to tackle Jim Walt next. Jim was a true master of the gambling game, smart, funny, and cautious. He was uh, impenetrable to uh, conventional scrutiny. If Cassandra wanted to defeat him, she would need to use her unique ability. Oh fuck, we are too tired to, uh, to use clairvoyance. <laughs> Uh, Jim Vaught played like a true ace, seeing through Cassandra's bluffs, reading her reactions with a near divine brilliance, and never making a betting mistake. When he took her last ship, she expressed her admir admiration, and he replied with a string of compliments. He promised they would talk after the game. The tournament had finished, and though Cassandra did not win, Ricardo La Fortina, uh, Fortuna congratulated her on her excellent game, and the two chatted for a while. Though La Fortuna had other business to attend to, he invited Cassandra to visit him at the residence whenever she liked. As Cassandra made to leave, Jim Ward approached her and offered her to buy a glass of port. Uh, she accepted. Mr. Vaud was visibly delighted. He ordered drinks as he uh, told Cassandra about his younger years with a refreshing bluntness. Vaud had run away from home 
at a young age and wandered to the West, finding no shortage of trouble and becoming an infamous gambler and duelist. One fateful day, however, he played against a powerful man, taking a fortune from him. The man was furious, telling Ward to leave the country um, and renounce gambling uh, uh, on pain of death. Uh, that's when Ward headed to Mexico. Oh, Mexico. He had been miserably ever since, but when he'd heard about the tournament, he decided he didn't care for it anymore. It was, what, it was worth the risk to play again. What else uh, was it uh, to live for? Cassandra asked uh, what, all, uh, what all of this had to do with her. He looked at her uh, wistfully. He told her that he saw her younger self in Cassandra. She had inspired him to take uh, his guns. Uh, off the hook and go looking for trouble again. If there was a person he would love to ride with, it was her. Um, Cassandra accepted his offer to keep the numbers low. Uh, she was asking Felicia to stay behind. Yes, please. Does, does that technically mean we have won whatever amount of cash uh, Jim just won? Because Jim here must have won a shit ton uh, of of um, of um, of money. Good. So. Jim has a mammoth rifle, 6-1, um, unfortunately minus 15 aim, and the quarter pounder pistol, 6-1 also. Well, Jim buddy, you have all of the uh, all of uh, the money in the world, and yet you're running around with these fucked up pistols. How and why? By the way, let's get the relics. Okay. So as I was saying, Jim needed new equipment and we were giving Jim new equipment. How about Jim, how about you take like this here and the pistol and the shoes. Thank you. Um, good. Time to visit Ricardo La Fortuna in his residence. I don't even know where that residence is. Uh, but before we do so, let's again shortly take a rest. Um, oh, here we go. The Rossetti Hacienda was a large residence with a beautiful garden surrounding it. The highlights of uh, the Hacienda was an amazing collection of firearms. Mr. Rossetti said he was willing to part with some of them for the right price. Uh, okay, sounds like a great idea. Well, this here isn't bad. The 18 shooter. Specifically, the damage into full cover is is pretty okay. Yeah, but none of the weapons is necessarily so much better than the ones that we already have. I'm still wondering where is the residence 
Am I missing something? Hospital, Atlante. Gosh, where is the residence? Hmm. Visit Ricardo La Fortuna in his residence. Yeah, I would like to do that, but how exactly are we going to do that? Oh, never mind. La Fortuna residence. Cassandra strolled over to Mr. La Fortuna's home in contrast to the reception hall. The hacienda was quite modest. Uh, Cassandra and her companions were greeted politely by Mr. La Fortuna, who offered the refreshments and a small present as a token of his appreciation. He and Cassandra had an amiable, amicable chat. Uh, discussing politics, art, fashion, as well as Mr. La Fortuna's various undertakings. La Fortuna's expression became cautious as he explained that his relationship with the protector had deteriorated over the last few months. He had finally resolved to help uh, the Mexican Navy uh, chase this undesirable man from the country. Cassandra suggested he could help if La Fortuna were interested. He asked what she had in mind. Cassandra sa uh, said she had a talent to eliminate inconvenient characters from the earth. Lying bravely, she revealed that she was successfully contra uh, contract uh, uh, that she was a successful contract assassin with many hits on her re resume. If Mr. La Fortuna was taken aback uh, by this news, he did not show it. He merely smiled. What the fuck? She was uh, an assassin all along. She merely smiled and responded that Cassandra's help would be required. He had a train loaded with uh, mercenaries uh, that, uh, that were heading towards the coast at that very moment. They would seize the island within hours. La Fortuna's mercenary force had to be prevented from reaching the bay. Harden suggested they blow up the train. Cassandra concurred. They just needed to procure the explosives. Ooh, got you. So she uh, faked that she had been an assassin because La Fortuna seems to be um, seems to be working together with the protector. Okay. The coal mine operated day and night with a constant excavation of dynamite uh, was in frequent use and ample supply. Harden suggested we steal some. Cassandra felt she might be able to persuade the miners to give her some. Um, Harden steals uh, them. Harden stuck into the mine and found explosives as he was coming out. However, he was discovered and had to shoot a miner uh, to make his escape. Cassandra had the feeling the authorities would hear about that. Shit. Cassandra and her companions arrived at the ambush site. Finally, they planted the dynamite and waited for the train. The charge would just uh, was uh, would be just enough to derail the train without causing further damage. Um, there was still some time left. Uh, planting more dynamite would would cause more damage, but might destroy any valuables carried in the train. Um, fortifying the area would give them an advantage, but would cu uh, cu um, cut off some escape routes. Um, Let's fortify the area and uh, that is where the enemies are starting to jump in. I think we have a fully equipped team ready to go. If La Fortuna's mercenaries were allowed to reach the coast, there would be no way to reach the protector. Survivors crawled from the ruins of the train wreck. The team readied their weapons with killing intent. Of course, our sniper 
is being <laughs> positioned right in the uh, right in the middle. Putting him into full cover. Okay, so I guess time for some barrage. Which killed one and pretty much destroyed most of the others. I like it. Cassandra kills that guy as well. Yeah, we're, we're barely missing him. Unfortunate. Um... We're depleting most of their luck. Let's see what the enemies are going to do. This guy with nine point oh wow, a lot of nine hit points enemies. of nine hit point enemies thinking about it we might want to use barrage a little bit late barrage a little bit later um, she could deal up to eight points of damage let's first and foremost get a prayer for some more blessed aim oh she got blessed healing that's unfortunate would only deal 8 and not 9 damage. Hmm. Deals 5 damage for an enemy that's not protected to by sunlight, okay? Two, three, four, five. Gosh. We can't go for chain kill because we do not have enough action points for that. one down D 
depleting all of his luck. This should kill uh, the guy. Yep, there's one more down. Gosh, even more. Okay, reloading. Let's take a shot. Hit one. Can't hit both of them. Uh, that's unfortunate. So if we were to take the revolver, uh, that's not going to be better as well. I think we're just going to triple shot fanning uh, this guy. There we go, he's down. Problem is if we're moving up to here, we can be flanked from here. Three. Well, this this guy here can flank us, so might as well start killing him. It's one down. And that's another one down. One, two... I don't need chain kill for that. We can just start killing them normally. Well, maybe not. They do have too much luck at their hand. One of them still has been moving to here. All right, reloading. One of them has moved here. Not sure where he's going to go. No, we, we can't reach him. No, no.
Okay, we could start to fire three shots at him. Basically drying out his luck. He's down to three hit points. Okay. Reloading, and we should be fine. Really short AFK, and then we're finishing the scenario. Okay, let's kill this guy. We should leave no witnesses. I think with a... Normal shot, we might even be able... No. turn we are going to be able to flank him Cassandra looked relieved when the last mercenary was finally dispatched Okay, very, very good. So a couple of things happened here. Not only did we receive uh, uh, cash, but we also had a new card and a new elixir. Plus, most importantly, our wounds trans uh, transformed into boons. So. Let me show you uh, the mechanic of the wounds is if you survive like two fights with them um, or one fight, one to two fights, they are actually uh, transforming into something else like uh, the gushing wound now um, transformed into some, some organs had been removed but that gives the other fellas less, uh, less to aim at. Um, so he's now receiving one hit point per turn, permanent regeneration which is just awesome. Uh, missing four finger you were missing a finger but the next one in line was your favorite anyway 10 aim one maximum hit point and a little bit less maximum luck he's now at eight hit points overall and is just having a blast right so if we there's a new item as well, uh, Eagle Elixir grants superior aim for a short 
uh, time. Well, that's fine. And we got ourselves a new card, if I'm not mistaken. Just uh, just by finishing the mission. Yeah, here we go. Queen of Hearts. Going into that sweet, sweet uh, full house up here. And we got ourselves uh, the Nine of Diamonds. Exchange health with a target character. That's really, really good. Um... Giving it uh, to our friend over here, um, making it two pairs or a full house. Yeah, I think we're going to go with full house, and he's at 85 aim, which is pretty, pretty good for a sniper. Nine hit points, 85 aim. Wow, that's really good. Yeah, we're almost getting there. Going to the Fate Trader. I mean, we can give him this weird monocle, which is better than the uh, the one that he's currently having. And there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't buy another cannon uh, Calavera, which is a great weapon. I absolutely love it. So I think everyone now has the Cannon Calavera. Like I said, super good weapon. Giving him a weird mono uh, monocle. Uh, raising his side to 43, which is huge. Very, very long range now. Yeah, the only thing that's missing is a bit aim, but that's pretty much it. We're returning to Lord Fortuna's residence. Cassandra returned to Re Ricardo La Fortuna, who was visibly upset. He told uh, Cassandra his mercenaries had been uh, victims of a vicious railway sabotage and that he would like to reconsider her proposal. As uh, the words left his mouth, he started for a moment, uh, stared for a moment at Cassandra, as if suddenly wondering if the woman could be behind the train innocent. Then he seemingly uh, shook it off. A woman could never perpetrate something as darstingly as this. Cassandra accepted. La Fortuna explained how to get to the harbor. From there, his boat would take her and her companions to the island. He promised a significant reward if she dealt with his competitor successfully, including 1,000 pesos in advance, for Cassandra to replenish her equipment. And there's the harbor. general store let's browse their wares yeah we have more than enough gold like this scenario here is overflowing with gold cassandra and her companions arrived at larfortunia's commercial harbor La Fortuna's letter would guarantee them safe passage to the Protector's base of operations, Island Chrysalida. And that is where we're going to join with our next uh, mission. It's going to be the final fight of uh, this scenario. I'm very much looking forward for it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, please leave a comment down below and give it a thumbs up because that signals YouTube as always that you like it and more people will see it. Thank you. Have a great day.